I had a few different starts in life, from a tradesman as a fitter and machinist to uh, sort of human resources personnel kind of roles in various banking, IT companies, the steel industry, and then got into being a management consultant doing outplacement work when it was fairly new and trendy, and that led into my own business. I did retire early. My goal was always to go between some 50 and 55. I didn't want to be an employee, even my own employee, at age 60. But I've always been a rower from 15 years of age, so we're talking 55 years with a few breaks in between, uh, you know, as a youngie, and then masters rowing for the last 30 years or so. Uh, I've always been a bike rider, and uh, as a kid I had a track bike and, you know, all the usual stuff, mountain bikes and what have you, that you know, most kids have. I'd always wanted to do, it, to do the bicycle mechanics course and, and the best one in the world for, for an intro is uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, the United Bicycle Institute in uh, Portland and Ashland in Oregon. And when I came back here I thought I should actually do something with this. So I contacted one of the local men's sheds because I'd heard that they were doing up bikes for a group called uh, Camp Breakaway. Was told the guy who was doing it had, had an accident. Uh, and hey, why don't you take over? So I inherited about 30 bikes <laughs> to start with in various states of disrepair and probably started doing them up and it went from there. So it wasn't something I planned, it was something I fell into, yeah. I got a request from uh, Youth and Community Services just in Wyong. Uh, a young lad, 13 years of age, coming home to live with his mum for the first time. He'd been in foster care, uh, and all he wanted when he got home was a road bike. And I said, no, you, you, need, you mean a mountain bike? No, 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 he wants a road bike. And I said, well, I've got one. I just happen to have, we don't get many road bikes, but I did happen to have one. And it was fantastic that I could then follow. So this is where it came from, this is where it went to. We've got someone who was happy donating it, and we've got someone who was ecstatic to get it. And uh, I know that young boy rode that bike for a long, long time, probably still is. There's a limit to how many bike rides and how many rowing events I can go in and how many holidays I can have. Um, I find it is a useful activity. It's not about the good feeling for me. I think it's about, on occasion, seeing the look on people's faces. I see no reason to stop. You know, when uh, uh, the bikes keep coming in and keep going out, hey, the world works. You know, there's a nice balance in the equation, so, yeah. Again in Corey, we see someone who's getting a lot of satisfaction out of helping others in retirement. It's a creative way of doing it. And at the same time, he's keeping active and fit with his sporting interest. It was interesting to note that he continued with long-time sporting interests in his retirement, and why not? We do take our interests into retirement with the bonus of the time and the freedom to keep them going. Not all of us might be as successful. And in fact, sometimes we have disappointments. This episode looks at regret. We all have regrets, no question. And it seems the older we get, the more we have to regret. <laughs> and that's true. But the problem is that it can impact on our lives. And so we're asking the question, how can we handle regrets so they don't impact on our retirement? Regret comes about when we look back on our life and we are sorry for things we have done or haven't done, that we have said or that we haven't said. That's where regret comes from, it's looking back. I think regret generally happens because of the mistakes that we make. Let me say that I don't think all regret is bad. I think it's actually helpful to look back over life and go, you know, I hurt some people, I did it, didn't realise I was doing it, or maybe I even did it intentionally, and I have regrets about that and I wish I could do it differently. I think it's helpful to go back and to look at the mistakes you've made realistically and go, that was not good. That was not my finest moment. And to be honest with yourself. The, the problem is when you get stuck there and you can't forgive yourself. When you expect perfection of yourself 
and aren't prepared to accept that you're far from perfect and you're stuffed up because you're a human being and that's part of life. So to be able to re be realistic about the mistakes you made and to be able to forgive yourself and, and move on and not ruminate about that and put a lot of uh, time and a lot of head miles into thinking about that. Of course, regret will impact on people in different ways. I mean, some people will just shrug it off, but others will take it to heart and it becomes a part of them that, that can really worry them. They, they're reflecting back on things that have happened and they worry about it, but there's nothing they can do about it. So it just kind of sits there in the heart. Retiring too soon, because really they didn't want to retire, they just didn't want to keep doing the job they had. And there's a difference. Um, not, not really thinking past the first um, three to six months of retirement. So usually those three to six months, um, fixing up the house, doing a big overseas trip or around Australia, catching up with friends, sort of resting, relaxing, getting, you know, back the mojo that was lost because they've been working so hard. And then they're refreshed again and, and ready to go, but there's no job. So um, the regrets have been sometimes, yeah, leaving work permanently um, and not having anything to really go to. We've just done some research when we're down downsizing, for example, about what the biggest regrets are in terms of what people um, miss, and it doesn't tend to be anything to do with finances. It tends to be to do with social, emotional and relationship-based regrets. Um, I think, though, that a lot of people who look back on their life in retirement with regret have probably always looked back with regret. You know, they would have been the 18-year-old who wished that they'd done different subjects at university. They would have been the 25-year-old who wished they'd done a different university degree. They would have been the 32-year-old who wished they'd married a different person, you know. So I think that sometimes that looking back re with regret is almost dispositional, that some people will always continue to look back with regret, but a lot of the regrets that people have are more to do with relationships and people than to do with things, things or money. Regrets in retirement. Mm. Well, a lot of people say, I wish I'd, you know, saved a bit more, perhaps. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, some people may say that, but it's, it's more to do with people thinking, oh, I didn't realise I could have done. And, you know, you list an activity, you list a volunteering sort of role, um, you list some employment opportunities. Um, perhaps sitting down with, you know, a so-called encore career person saying, well, you know, do you really want to retire? and what sort of things um, could you do? Because I think the other thing that a lot of people uh, regret or um, perhaps feel sad about is that they haven't had a, a social circle or a, um, a network outside work. And that's particularly true for men. If they haven't got the connection, haven't got the social circle outside, men, outside work, it can be very difficult to just say, well, go along to a club or go along to a volunteering organisation and pick up friends. Because if your self-worth has been involved in your work, it's very difficult to therefore say, well, you know, was, and then they become, um, you know, when I was at work. <laughs> we often have people, especially as they've, they're stopping work, going to retirement, saying, I wish I had have started earlier, or I have more money and, you know, um, a bit of a woulda, coulda, shoulda. I try and get the focus off what they don't have and to focus on what they do have. And also measuring themselves against other people um, has no real purpose. So as to say, look, you've got this much, this is your lifestyle, um, you'll actually be quite comfortable with, with, with what you've saved. Um, it, it is more difficult when there's very little saved and the lifestyle will be quite reduced, you know, from having a full-time income to living, say, on, on Social Security entirely, especially if you don't own a house. That, that's a difficult conversation. But I think it's more around being content and comfortable with what you do have rather than wishing you had more because that, that's not it's not going to change anything there are a whole list of possible regrets and it seems that it depends on your situation as to what you regret and what i'm picking up is that not preparing well for your retirement can be a regret and that stands the reason i can imagine people saying i wish i had more savings or i wish i'd paid off the mortgage before retiring it has to have an impact 
couples can also have regrets, and marriage counsellors are well skilled at helping couples deal with these kinds of things. When there's regrets, this is my advice. You're never too old to begin your life again on a new trajectory of happiness. I don't care how bad you've messed things up. I don't care how much your kids hate you. You know, Dad's always been at work and he, you know, he's never had us and I hate him and he's neglected us. You're never too late to start over again. So sometimes a good thing if you've got regrets is just say sorry and say you're going to try harder and then do it. Change, radically orientate your life to doing things that bring love to a person's life. It's possible that one could have many regrets by the time you get towards retirement age. Um, there, there are some things that um, I think are, are fairly typical and I, you know, it's interesting that 25% of people who retire have difficulty managing um, the relationship issues in, in retirement. But look, I think some of the things that people have, I regret that I didn't invest more time in the marriage. I regret that I didn't give more time to the family. I regret that we moved. Uh, we shouldn't have moved. I regret that I didn't retire earlier. I regret, I mean, you know, you have all these sorts of uh, things, some of which may go back a long way in the past, things that have happened that you still c carry regret about. Um, there are lots of things that you can have and retirement can be somewhat flavoured if you're not careful by your sense of regret. Um, one of the exciting stories that one of my tutors once shared, Dan uh, Siegel, a neuroscientist from UCLA in Los Angeles, he shared this story. There was this very famous professional, came and saw him, he was 91. And he said, my family hate me. My wife hates me. She just sticks with me because out of obligation. But I know she hates me. My kids hate me. They want nothing to do with me. They absolutely hate me. And he recognised he had spent too much time. He was a very high, internationally known professional. And he rang Dan up and said, Dan, do you think there's something that you can help me with? And Professor Siegel said, yes, uh, come in. And in three months of helping him make sense of att his attachment history, he was obviously avoidantly attached from all these early childhood influences, but from helping him make sense of it, not changing it, just making sense of it, he actually earned secure attachment and in four months' time, his wife rang up Professor Siegel and said, what have you done with my husband? What have you done to him? Where is my husband? And Siegel didn't know what she was talking about and said, well, well, he comes in here every week. She said, I know, but he's a changed man. He's no longer that cold, distant. He's warm and he's caring and he's empathetic and he's playful. And he's actually curious about me and listens to me. 91, you're never too old to change. Um, how does a couple handle it? Well, you know, I mean, I guess it's a little bit like saying, so how do you handle conflict? And maybe that's the issue here, but in terms of dealing with your regrets, um, you know, us usually I, I say there are three things. One is you need to face them, you know, don't, don't keep sort of pushing them aside and avoiding them, but face them. Um, accept that there is an issue there that, that, that bugs you, that bothers you. The second thing is, when you faced it, fight it. And by that I mean, deal with it. Deal with it in a positive kind of a way. And, you know, what we often say, um, you know, as counsellors, is that you need to be able to go through and process the whole history of that regret to understand what caused it, understand what emotion it, it sort of generated within you, and to understand the disappointment and the regret that you have so that you are able to at least understand 
why that still niggles or bugs you. And then when you've done that, you're in a position to say, so what do I want to do about that? Now, there are some regrets that you can actually maybe change, like I regret that we moved to this place. You might be able to say, well, okay, we need to revisit that and move somewhere else that's more appropriate. But some relational regrets, you know, I guess it brings you to the point where you say, I need to let it go, I need to forgive, um, which is a way of saying just to let it go. There's a lot of wisdom in that mantra, face it, fight it, forgive it. Forgive or let it go is how it was expressed. I think sometimes couples don't try to address regrets or disappointments, and they can become issues that fester in the background that can't be healthy. We need to accept the truth that we can change and grow at whatever age. That's important. For several years, Australian Bronnie Ware looked after people who were dying. Several days a week, she would visit with people who were dying. She would care for them, she would feed them. Sometimes she would make sure that they were cared for. Sometimes she took them out and she would talk to them. And she discovered that people would talk about their regrets at this time of life. And she ended up writing, writing a book about the top five regrets of the dying. And it's interesting to note these regrets that they came up with. The most common regret, actually, was I wish I'd had the courage to live life true to myself, not the life expected of me. And you can almost feel the pain out of that. Another one was I wish I hadn't worked so hard and spending more time with family was the issue there. I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. You can understand that. I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends. And one particular instance, she, she, she reveals the loneliness of a woman she was caring for and, and was actually able to connect her with a long ago friend, which is kind of exciting. And the other one was, I wish I'd let myself be happier. It's interesting that they were both about being true to themselves, but about relationships. The way we handle regret is important for our ageing process. It's been found to be a very important factor in determining our resilience as we get older. People who are stuck in a cycle of regret do not show good resilience to be able to handle all the ups and downs of retirement and getting older. So dealing with regret is something that we should consider as an important life task to really do. It's an important resilience factor as we grow older. I don't think that there is anything wrong with spending some time to think about the things that we've done well and being able to be realistic about what I've achieved and be able to be proud of that. If we have low self-esteem, however, then we are likely to look at anything that we've done through uh, dark coloured glasses and it may be difficult for us to see the good things that we've done. So that's tricky if you've got low self-esteem. But if your self-esteem is fairly healthy, you should be able to look back and go, I did a good job there. I made a contribution. I made a difference. And for us to be proud of that, because if we're going to be honest about our mistakes, we also need to be honest about our achievements. In handling regret, there is a sense in which sometimes we need to make things right. When we look back and there may be an opportunity or the need to apologise for something, a need to perhaps reconnect with somebody, a need to somehow re-establish that, that, um, that connection you had with somebody before. Uh, sometimes we can go back, we can perhaps do the study we wish that we'd never done when we were younger, or go to places we wish we had gone to when we were younger. So in retirement, we have a little more freedom to explore some of those possibilities. So regret is not bad in this, if it helps you to move forward. The problem with regret would be is if you get stuck in it and you keep looking back and you keep your eyes focused on the negative and not the future and the positive. That's where the problem could arise. It is definitely possible for regrets to, to rule your life. Regrets can come or beca can become all-consuming, where they just take over 
and where a person will spend much of the day thinking about all the things they'd wish they'd done differently. Nothing is achieved by that other than to, it's a great way to get depressed. I think it's about accepting that we, we are not perfect and we don't have to have done life perfectly to be a worthwhile and a good person. And I think it's about giving us grace. Grace is what uh, makes the world such a better place. And if we can give it to ourselves, then we can also give that grace to others. Being able to accept grace, being able to give grace, being able to live with grace, I think, makes it possible for us to go, yeah, I did some things that I wouldn't do again, but that's okay. Of course, there's one really good way to handle regret, if you can, and that's to achieve it. Let's suppose you're a couple of years out from retirement and uh, you've always had this ambition to play a musical instrument. Why don't you start now? And, and in fact, why don't you start and decide that you're going to play a piece you really enjoy at your retirement party? I mean, there, there's a, a goal you could set. I mean, there are lots of things that you can achieve that you've regretted. Maybe it's learn a language. Maybe it's go visit someplace you always wish you'd visited. Please don't think that all regrets fit into the same category, that you can't change them, because there are some that you can change. Regret is one of the most common negative emotions. An interesting study in Germany, though, found that older people tend not to go down the pathway of regret quite as much as young people do. Perhaps because they know by that stage that it's a pretty futile path to pursue. If regret leads us to do something about what it is that we feel regretful about, for example, if we've said something or done something that in hindsight we realise wasn't the best thing to do, if that spurs us on then to go and put things right, repair a relationship, perhaps restore a relationship, then it's not a bad thing at all. So it has got positive aspects. Regret becomes problematic though when we get stuck in a cycle of regret and we think about it over and over again. We know that rumination, which is that thinking about the same thing over and over again, we know that rumination is connected to depression. So rumination is this highway <laughs> to depression if you like. And if regret leads to rumination, then I think it becomes a, a negative thing and something that we need to deal with. If the regret is in connection with something that has a perhaps a spiritual overtone, so perhaps a regret about something that you did when you were younger or a decision that you made and you feel really guilty about that, if it is in the spiritual realm then I would suggest that you seek out some spiritual care or someone to give you spiritual advice and direction in that, in that regard. If it is regret about a relationship then I think counselling is very much advised and something that can be used very usefully. Most of us have regrets that make us cringe about what we did or didn't do, but we can shrug them off or at least move on. Some of us may not be able to do that, which is why it's important to get some help if we need it. We need to recognise that regret is a human reality. We all have them. We all have to deal with them one way or another. And if they cause issues in our life, we need to get help to sort them out. Well, most people would go to their doctor probably in the first place to get a referral. The referral is most likely to be to a psychologist. Um, people can make an appointment with a psychologist themselves if they want to. If they go to the um, Australian Psychological Society website or whichever country they're in, there'll be a society of psychologists and they'll be able to find a practitioner from the database that's available there. Um, that's, you know, some strategies of where they can get help. Usually too, within Australia, for example, we have Beyond Blue and a Lifeline. Um, so looking out for those online support and counselling services. If people have never tried them, then it's a good idea to, to try them and see whether or not they're going to work for them. Other people will want a personal one-on-one -on -one approach, but I think it's not necessarily the best way to just try to work through it yourself. Um, even though that might have worked for you previously, if you find yourself going back to the same regrets, um, digging yourself into a bit of a hole, then yeah, find someone to help pull you out. 
The opposite of regret is a satisfaction and joy in life and an enjoyment of life. If you feel, if you sense regret about something, it's wise to look at if it's true. First of all, is what you're feeling guilty about or regretful about, is there really something there that you could have done differently? And if there is, it may be something to spur you on to go and sort this out, fix it up, repair, restore the relationship. If there is nothing to be done about this, and if this is a regret that is about something that you can do nothing about, then there may be a good reason to let it go. When we regret something, we are admitting that we don't know everything, that we are fallible, that we are not God, that we make mistakes. So it's a good reminder of our humanity. Well, as we get older, apparently, we regret less, so that's a good thing. So we see that people start to focus on bigger things that they might regret rather than sweating the small stuff every day. So, and they've done journal studies on this where they've compared younger people to older people. And we've, we've seen that to some extent too when we look back at the downsizing decision that people make. Um, as they get older, there just tends to be less regret. Um, in the case of downsizing though, one of the things that we know, for example, that might prompt regret is having to be forced into a, to make a decision. And this is the same thing when people leave work. Um, where there's a lack of choice and they don't get a, a say in how or when things happen, there tends to be longer term you know, resentment and people don't transition as well in those circumstances. So regret can partly be about not having enough say. So I think being able to be clear about what you want is important in terms of helping other people to understand what your priorities are as well. Professor Carl Pilmer of Cornell University surveyed 1,200 older people in the US and asked them about their regrets. He was attempting to find what common regrets there were, and he was expecting things like um, an affair, a shady business deal, th those kind of things. He was surprised with the top regret, which was, I wish I hadn't worried so much. That was the top regret, and it was about worrying about the future. I guess we all worry about the future at times. I mean, that's just natural. As we look back, there will be regrets. And if there's nothing we can do about it, we just need to let them go. That's not always easy. I think the first thing to admit is that we all have regrets. You can't go through life without them. And mostly, with the exception of a cringe when they arise, it's OK. It's a sign that we're all human. However, if it's an issue that we can't fix or can't deal with, it's worth getting help. That's common sense. We hope this has been helpful as you prepare for your retirement. And we hope you can join us for the next episode, which is our final one. And it's about making sure your retirement is your retirement.